Welcome everyone. My name is Mark Connard and I'm the marketing manager for Stryker's Sterazone BP4 Sterilizer, which was recently acquired from a company called TSO3 in October 2019. With me today, we have Carol Stevens, one of Stryker's Sterazone BP4 clinical specialists, to talk about the impact the Sterazone BP4 Sterilizer can have on endoscope reprocessing and sterilization. Carol is a GI nurse by trade, but has been training SPD staff from the Sterazone BP4 Sterilizer for the past three years. So Carol, let's begin. Thank you, Mark. I'm a registered nurse and have been a gastrointestinal nurse for 30 plus years. I managed a very large GI unit in Connecticut for seven years prior to coming to industry as a clinical specialist 11 years ago. In 2006-2007, I was very honored to be representing the GI nurses across the country as national president of the Society for GI Nurses and Associates. I came to TSO3, now Stryker, three years ago. Carol, it's clear that you have an extensive background in the GI space and all the complexities related to reprocessing flexible endoscopes. So with that, what problems do hospitals and sterile processing and GI departments face today regarding cleaning and disinfecting or sterilizing flexible endoscopes? So I can honestly say flexible endoscopes have been my babies for a long, long time. They have a very complex design and narrow, long channels, especially the therapeutic scopes like the duodena scopes and the endoscopic ultrasound scopes. The elevator channel on the duodena scope takes more than 25 steps to complete the manual cleaning process properly. Flexible endoscopes can't be cleaned properly in just five minutes. Proper endoscope reprocessing, including thorough cleaning and high-level disinfection, is necessary between patients to minimize the risk of cross-contamination. There are specific guidelines facilities can follow, outlined by SGNA, ARN, AMI, and ISHM to assist the end user in the cleaning process. During the first several years of my career, prior to having an automated process, AER, for high-level disinfecting scopes, I used to soak scopes in a bucket of glutaraldehyde. It's hard to believe that that's how we started, and glutaraldehyde had an awful odor. The Spalding classification categorizes scopes as semi-critical devices, therefore only needing high-level disinfecting. High-level disinfection does not kill bacterial spores, however, and therefore it does not provide a margin of safety. Any non-compliance with guidelines or manufacturer protocols can lead to errors in reprocessing steps and can put the patient at risk for an infection. Sterilization eliminates all microbial life, including bacterial spores, providing a definite increase in safety margin. Both sterile processing departments and GI areas are always under pressure to turn over instrumentation and scopes to meet the very busy ORGI schedules. Meeting turnover requirements lends itself to human error in reprocessing. There is definitely a fine line between efficiency and reprocessing effectiveness for the safety of every patient. So based on the issues you just described, Carol, what specifically about the Sterazone VP4 sterilizer stood out to you and then drove your decision to join TSO3 three years ago? My decision to join TSO3 was based on a personal situation. When I was president of SGNA, my husband was serving his country with the Army in Iraq. Having lived with a GI nurse, he realized when his tour was over, he would be turning 50 and therefore would need a screening colonoscopy which he wasn't looking forward to. He was not aware that during this time, specifically 2003 to 2009 at the VA, improperly reprocessed endoscopes led to the notification of over 10,000 patients, possibly being exposed to HIV and hepatitis B. My heart went out to him and all the veterans across the country and I wanted to make sure no patient would be at risk since this was a very important necessary screening test. I had read there was discussion by Dr. William Rotala that the Spalding classification may need to be revisited. The proposed changes would affect the critical classification category. 
it should include items that directly or secondarily enter sterile tissue or vascular system like bronchoscopes, cystoscopes, and duodenoscopes. These items should be sterilized. What an opportunity, I thought, to change outcomes for our veterans and all patients. I researched what was available in the market, and I was excited to find the Sterizone VP4, an innovative technology with dual sterilants, 50% hydrogen peroxide and a small amount of ozone could sterilize a specific multi-channel flexible endoscope. I was determined as a patient advocate to make sure a sterile scope would be available for all patients needing an endoscopic procedure, and of course, including my husband. Carol, that's an incredibly powerful story, and it's, it's really motivating that you would change your career based on, you know, better patient outcomes. You know, since the Sterizone VP4 has this capability to sterilize multi-channel flexible endoscopes that fall within certain dimensions, what do hospitals have to do to prepare to switch from high-level disinfection to now sterilizing their multi-channel flexible endoscopes in the Sterizone VP4? Facilities moving from high-level disinfection of their scopes to sterilization would have to consider several things before implementing this change process. First and foremost, they would need to check to ensure their endoscopes are validated on our compatibility matrix. We do have clearance for multi-channel flexible scopes within certain dimensions. Next, involving a multidisciplinary team approach, including infection control, risk management, someone from the C-suite, GI physicians, surgeons to address current policies, procedure changes, and to put together a risk assessment. Addressed in the risk assessment should be the cost to the facility if a patient should contract an infection or God forbid there was a death after an endoscopic procedure due to CRE, a superbug infection, which now we know affects at least 2 million Americans annually with a mortality rate of 50%. When customers make this decision, it is important to keep in mind two very critical steps in reprocessing, bedside pre-cleaning and most important, manual cleaning. You cannot high-level disinfect or sterilize dirt. The clinical team at Stryker can provide assistance in moving from high-level disinfection process to sterilization of scopes. Scopes will no longer be placed in high-level disinfection prior to sterilization, but rinsing and drying of all lumens is very critical. Proper packaging, according to the manufacturer's instructions for low temperature sterilization should be followed. Sterilization will eliminate the seven to 14 day hang time rule since scopes will be terminally sterilized. You know, Carol, obviously this ability to sterilize multi-channel flexible endoscopes, it's a fantastic and revolutionary technology, but does the Sterizone VP4 offer any other values or capabilities that make it stand out apart from other low temperature sterilizers on the market today? The sterile processing department at any facility would be absolutely thrilled to be able to use the Sterizone VP4. It is smart, innovative technology that has a lot to offer. Single button operation. Our tagline at Stryker is load it up, mix it up. Place single lumen flexible scopes with rigid scopes, batteries, cameras, cords in the same load. No sorting of instrumentation like with the Sterad or Sterra systems. High throughput for any low temperature sterilizer. We're able to support a very busy robotic center, being able to run three robotic scopes in one load compared to Sterad or Steris. We have large capacity, up to 75 pounds compared to Sterad and Steris. We're the only low temperature sterilizer able to sterilize multi-channel flexible scopes within certain dimensions make sure the facility checks our compatibility matrix before deciding on whether their scopes can be placed in our sterilizer. I'm very excited to be supporting the Sterizone VP4 as one of the Stryker clinical specialists, providing a sterile endoscope for each patient having a necessary, sometimes life-saving procedure is my goal. Mark, thank you for having me and letting me share my story. 
Carol, this was fantastic. And I really appreciate you taking the time today to walk through your story and your reason behind the Sterazone BP4 and its capabilities to impact patient care. For anyone that's interested to learn more about the Sterazone BP4 sterilizer, please visit the Sterazone BP4 product page at www.striker.com, or you can reach out to your local Striker Orthopedic Instrument sales representative. Thank you and have a fantastic day.